Welcome back to the SBP podcast, Mobile Filmmaking. I'm your host, Susie Botello, and you are listening to episode 157. Hey, in this episode, it's just going to be us, just you and me. I have a question to ask you guys. Um, who are you? <laughs> I've been doing this six years, and I have a pretty good idea who, who I'm talking to. I'm talking to artists, filmmakers, writers, actors, independent creators of one form or another. And I'm also talking to people who just love movies and uh, are interested in how movies are made. But maybe I have it wrong, right? Maybe, just maybe, I'm there, there's you and you're, you don't fit any of those. And you'd like me to know who you are. I would love to know who you are. And so that's what I want to I wanted share with you. See, my interest in knowing who you are is helping you. Everything that I do from, from the film festival all the way through to this podcast and everything I've done in between has been to help independent creators and filmmakers and quite honestly the storytellers if you're a storyteller I basically embrace you and guess who's not a storyteller nobody (laughs) so everybody is a storyteller it's just a matter of at which point are you more conscious about storytelling or not right and how much you value storytelling in your life and in your legacy, in your past, and uh, in the future. Because there are many things that are happening in this world that are uh, evolutionary. They're happening, they're turning, things are changing, and it affects all of us. It affects you, it affects me, and everyone else. Now, there's always a group of people who benefit from change beyond you and me, right? Um... And most likely when I say you and me, I'm, I'm thinking that you're more like me than a big corporate giant CEO who is making billions of dollars a year. Um, and um, I mean, if that's who you are, let me know. <laughs> who knows, right? But there are always people who are going to benefit from change. And I always feel like you. it helps to be with this mentality of innovation. Now, innovation is not like reinventing something uh, in in that sense of the world. Like you're not just taking everything and throwing it out and saying, I'm going to invent a new way of doing this. It is a new way of doing this, but what innovation does is it takes things that are already working and established and it just sort of, well, I guess reinvent them I guess I just kind of contradicted myself, but you're reinventing what's already there uh, by not throwing away all, you know, what, what is that saying? Throwing away the, the, the baby with the bathwater. This will be a first if I got that right. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's something we all have to do. When I, when I talk to people about, you know, the film festival a long time ago before I mean, when when people used to say, when I used to say to people, did you know that you can make a movie with your phone? And they would look at me and go, what? Wow, that's a crazy idea. You know, oh, that's really interesting. Oh, that's a neat idea. Huh. You know, when people used to say that as opposed to today when people say, yeah, I know, I've heard of that. Right. Um, Way back then, I used to tell people that my whole purpose and my mission was not to say all the established filmmaking that there is is going out the door and we're going to replace it with only smartphones. The whole thing, right? The whole purpose of it in the beginning was to innovate what is already there. And and that meant, you know, when people would ask me, hey, do you, you know, how do I do this filmmaking thing with my phone? Am I allowed to do this? Am I allowed to do that? And I would tell them, one of the questions I would ask them was, do you already make films? You know, because I was really pushing for independent filmmakers to make movies with their phones, which was 
kind of self-murder, by the way, because all my connections looked at me and say, why would we do that? We already have the, the cameras and everything that we need to make films, right? And it just like, I was like, well, because it's better. And they were like, how could it be better? And I kept thinking about, you know, it's cheaper, it's less. When I say cheap, I hate I hate that I, I now have this, this issue with the word cheap um, because cheap sounds like, you know, cheap. You know, when you're, when you, a lot of people, when they say cheap, it's like, oh, uh, yeah, it, it has no value, right? It's minimal value. Detach it from value. Uh, inexpensive. It's inexpensive. That's what I'm supposed to say. So mobile filmmaking is inexpensive uh, compared to, you know, traditional filmmaking. Um, one of the things that, you know, they argued with me back and forth, and I wasn't seeing that little wall in the middle that said, these guys are thinking about the gear and the technology. They're thinking about that. They're not thinking about the concept. But innovation is a concept. And innovation is saying, you know, in mobile filmmaking is saying, look, and, and this is what I was answering them, how I was answering them, Hey, look, guys, you can use crane shots, put a phone on there. You can use external microphones and audio gear. You can use, um, you know, your $4,000 tripod. You can use whatever you want for audio and to support your production. You can use whatever you want. It's all about just replacing your camera with the one on your phone. They were like, oh, huh, okay, I see. Well, no, right? (laughs) So that's innovation, though. It's like taking what is already there, including the concept of filmmaking. What really surprised me, which I thought was really cool, was When I first got all these films, and they were so abstract, Um, I remember one uh, that was just images. uh, It was very, it was, you know, something that you would call experimental. And the experimental factor of filmmaking uh, was sort of reborn in a way when it came to mobile filmmaking. That was, that is, and still continues to be one of the coolest features of mobile filmmaking because now you're not just getting filmmakers, you're getting creators and artists who are using the phone as a tool to create visual art through video. And that to me is very powerful because it opens up the filmmaking community to include more and more people. And that was my goal from the beginning, but I I was really, I mean, I just found it like so cool that that happened because it made me aware of how much further and what what differences could bring, uh, mobile filmmaking could bring. So, you know, you are an artist, a filmmaker, a writer, an actor, a performer, a dancer, a musician, a composer. You are... I mean, I can't name them all. Art is everything, right, in a way. Um, But I've also met people who are not artists who were very interested in mobile filmmaking, and that's because they were thinking about it as video producers uh, for their small business. That's another way, another, another instance that mobile filmmaking has evolved beyond the art of filmmaking in itself. And I remember teaching a mobile filmmaking workshop. And I remember there being a dentist uh, that came. And I was like, a dentist? How interesting. How do you plan to use what you learn here, making videos with your phone? How do you plan to use that in your practice? And he said, well, I want to record oral surgeries and things like that for training. Um, I thought, well, that's interesting because it sort of proved this this notion that I have, this, this really deep-rooted belief that we're all storytellers 
and that we're all artists in one way or another. Now, you may be an accountant and you may be in your family, people say you have not an ounce of artist inside you. Don't believe that. That is not true. You also tell stories. You also appreciate art. I am sure you watch films and you listen to music and all those things. So, you know, don't let people's judgment uh, criticisms affect you. And the, the best way to do that, by the way, let me help you with that. Know you who you are. You got to know who you are. Know yourself. Don't be afraid to dig into yourself. It's just you and you, right? You and yourself. And know who you are because that helped me get through years of, you know, nobody's heard and nobody, you know, we're talking before the iPhone 4 through today where, you know, the iPhone 15 is about to be released (laughs) into the wild that is you. How can I help you? That's the reason why I want to know more about you. Now, we have a newsletter. I'm putting the link to into the notes here. I would love for you to subscribe because not only do you get a newsletter with all the notes um, and the link to the latest episode uh, on the same day that it comes out, probably within minutes, but you'll also receive, you know, other other interesting news from me and the podcast. And um, if uh, if you subscribe to that, you get a million dollars. You're rolling your eyes. Okay, maybe you don't get a million dollars, but you do get to benefit from some cool insights if you're subscribed to the podcast uh, through your app or anything like that. You get more than just, uh, oh, a new episode just came out push play and listen. So I just mentioned the iPhone 15 is coming out. And I just want you to know if you're a mobile filmmaker, if you have the iPhone 13, say, or the iPhone, my gosh, even the iPhone 6S, you don't really need to get the newest iPhone to make a movie. As a matter of fact, you don't even need an iPhone. You can use a a Samsung or a Pixel or a Sony. You can use any of those and all the other brands that you want to and still make an exceptionally award-winning film. So there there are a couple of things uh, in my film festival that I look for. And uh, one of them is, and I have to emphasize this, good audio Good audio is very important. It's more important than how good the video looks. But secondary is the video, of course. Uh, Well, I wouldn't say that's the second. Um, I would say first and foremost, above audio and video, is a great story, great captivating story. But branching out from that, the audio comes first and the video comes second. And one of the best ways to make a good narrative film per se is to watch films watch films more than once first of all watch it just like you know you're just watching a film like like you watch any movie then go back to watch it and those those times during the film that got you you know those times where you were like ooh ah er Uh, those are the times that you want to pay attention to what happened just before that and what is happening during that uh, in the film that is helping you or provoking that reaction from you. Because those are the things that you can do and implement in your film. Also, listen closely to the audio and maybe close your eyes and listen to the audio instead of watching and listening and then watch with the audio turned off you know literally analyze films another thing is i have a thing for documentaries um now when it comes to our film festival in the 
feature film competition, uh, we're not asking for documentaries unless your documentary is 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 more of a narrative style, sort of cinematic in some, in that sense. You know, very well treated. We're looking for narrative films in the feature films uh, competition, but in the shorts, which are up to ten minutes, three to ten minutes, um, we love documentaries. But here's the thing about documentaries that a lot of people who are just starting out don't realize. First of all, it is it is upon you to be ethical about what you are documenting and what you are sharing. Also, a documentary, it is a scripted thing. You do have to have some sort of an outline that you start with and and a purpose and what you the story that you want to tell. You do still have a story format. But one of the things about documentaries is that sometimes while you're out there filming stuff and interviewing people, uh, you find out new things that can sort of have you thinking afterwards, wow, maybe maybe I've just sort of stumbled into something that makes a better story than the one that I originally wanted to make. And that's something that it, it's a it's a big decision to make. Um, and that happens in documentary filmmaking all the time because people will tell you things or you will come across things. Even your perspective of a subject might change throughout your production. So one of the things that I would like to emphasize with documentary filmmaking is Taking someone on the street like, you know, street reporters do and just putting a microphone in front of them and saying, hey, you know, tell me this or that, or to have a very low quality audio during interviews. Those are things that will lower your chances of having your documentary selected. That is because audio, like I said, is very important. Now, you are dealing with situations when it comes to B-roll, right? That means things you capture that you have no control of. You can't set up lights and microphones and things like that when you are documenting something that is happening. You also can't do it when you're documenting or adding to your documentary things that have already happened that someone else captured. So if you need help with uh, your documentary you know, you're thinking about making a documentary, shooting it with your phone, get in touch with me. I'll, get, I'll you know, I'll share some, some stuff with you about how to make it better. Um, no one expects a documentary to be exceptional, but if you can grab some experts uh, in your subject and say, you know, make an appointment with them and say, look, I'll meet you at your office or I'll meet you at your house or we'll meet at the park, whatever, and sit down and frame your shot with them and, you know, make sure they look great, you know, add, add a, an external microphone um, or, or at least plug one in that's more, that sounds good, monitor the sound, all those things and interview them and try to do, try to do a setup where you have more than one camera filming that you can use another angle and when I say camera, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a phone. So if you have two phones recording, each from different angles, when you are editing your documentary and you want to cut, instead of doing, you know what a jump cut is, is when you cut someone right off while they're saying something, and then you insert another, another section and they continue. But on the video, you can see that as a chop, right? They, they jump, you know, the image jumps a little bit. It's very noticeable. Well, one of the things that you can do is you can insert a shot of them from another angle. And what I suggest in order to not have lip syncing, uh, you know, issues is to have the other shot be more of a wide shot, maybe a profile shot from the side, uh, maybe sometimes a very close close up that doesn't you know of maybe their eyes or their expression or them thinking things like that look you have 
so many cameras available to you when you're using smartphones because in a regular production, uh, you have one or two cameras, but when you're talking about mobile, you have the availability of more for a, a bunch of reasons. You can get some friends together and say, help me with this, help me with that. You get credit and, um, and I'll give you lunch, whatever. And, um, and let me use your phone to use it as a different angle. And those things are really beneficiary to your, your documentary. And they uh, lift your documentary from eh to ooh. Um, so <laughs> that's how that works. So, all right. How else can I help you? If you have questions, if you need help with your films or anything like that, uh, don't, be, don't be too shy. Uh, get in touch with me and let me know. But I just wanted to make... Uh, make this statement to give you, send you this message that I'm really interested in knowing more about you. Uh, my listeners, our listeners, you've probably been listening to the podcast and listened to at least more than just this one episode. It's, it's rare for me to come on without a guest on the podcast. Sometimes I do, <laughs> you know, and, and I enjoy doing that because I feel like, hey, it's just you and me. But at the same time, it's kind of weird because I don't see you or I don't get your reaction and you're not able to just respond live, right? Uh, but it's, uh, it's important for me to know who I'm talking with because, you know, I consider you all friends. And I know that may sound weird, but it's not. You're all my friends. I've been addressing you for, well, next month we're going on six years of this podcast. So we've had a friendship. If you've been listening to us since the beginning, we've got this long friendship and I consider you my friends. So don't think that you can't get in touch with me. And the best way to do it is probably signing up for that newsletter. <laughs> I feel like I'm selling soap or something. Sign up for the newsletter. Get clean with I don't know. Uh, so sign up, sign up for the newsletter. And um, when you sign up for the newsletter, I think I'm pretty sure there's a way that you can just reply to the newsletter and, uh, and I'll see the messages. Another thing I should tell you, uh, I just finally took the time to figure out how to add chapters to some of our episodes. Now this is episode 157. So most likely I'm not going to add chapters to all of them, okay? Just giving you a heads up. Um, <laughs> that would be crazy. But uh, there are some episodes that I'm adding chapters to, and uh, so be on the lookout for that. Now, every podcast app is different, but I can tell you that Apple supports it. You just have to scroll down be on the notes where the copyright is and it'll say chapters or show chapters or something like that. You click on that and then the, you have a list of the chapters and all you do is you click on, you know, if you want to jump around. But I think when I'm recording these things and when we're having conversations and everything, you miss a lot if you're jumping from chapters to chapters. I mean, it's it's choppy chapters, uh, conversations. So, um, so listen, I hope you have a, you're having a wonderful week. And again, I hope that you and I get to meet either at our film festival or, you know, some event. And I'd love to see your work. I'd love to see your work and have your work presented and showcased in our film festival. Um, hey guys. Thanks for listening.